Hey guys, what's up? This is Mystical from a cup of death.com and in this video we are bringing you a review of the software MSI Afterburner. One of the most popular questions that we get um, is that what program do we use to capture our gameplay videos uh, when we do reviews and different things like that. We use Playclaw or Fraps normally. Um, however, both of these programs, uh, Playclaw and Fraps, cost money. Uh, so we wanted to give you guys a free alternative that works just as well, and that is MSI Afterburner. Uh, so we went ahead and opened up MSI Afterburner. This program is more than just a screen capture program or a video capture program. Um, it also allows you to overclock your graphic card and things like that. However, we are using it specifically just for the video um, capturing capabilities. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing you want to do is open up the program after you've downloaded it and click on Settings. At the top here, you'll see a tab that says Video Capture. We're going to go ahead and click on that. And you have your global video capture hotkeys. All this is is what key you want to hit in order to start and stop your recordings. Um, I always use the home button. However, you can set this to, you know, whatever button you want it to be. Uh, but I use the home button on all my different things uh, just because it seems to be a key that's not normally used in a lot of video games. Secondly, you have the actual properties of the video capture process. You can choose the video format. Uncompressed is going to give you the absolute best quality. However, it's also going to give you the biggest file size, and it is going to be more, um, it is going to use more resources on your PC. Um, the M MJEG compression is the normal. It's the default. Um, it's the one I use. It's the best one I've found out of them um, that does that keeps the file size lower um, but still gives you great quality. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and stick with the default. You are welcome to you know try the different ones. And the nice thing about this program is if you hover over anything you just saw, a thing pops up and tells you everything about it, um, which is really nice. So right after you select the M M MJPEG compression, excuse me, you have your quality slider. Um, again, turning this up to 100% is going to give you the absolute best quality. Um, however, um, it is going to give you a bigger file size. Uh, so 85%, that's what most uh, programs use or is set at. Example, PlayClaw uses compression, um, which is the program we use most often. It's what you see all of our videos created with pretty much. Um, and at 85%, you really don't notice um, any type of quality issues. Frame size. This is the app, this is the size that it captures the frame. Um, see, it says when capturing video at high resolutions with full frame size, PCIe bus bandwidth can become the bottleneck limiting your frame rate due to huge amount of data copied from the GPU to the CPU via the bus on each frame. Um, you can increase performance by decreasing the frame size. For example, selecting half frame size instead of full frame will reduce the amount of data to be transferred from GPU to CPU by a factor of four. Um, decrease in frame size also effectively reduces CPU load and hard disk drive load by reducing the amount of data to be compressed and written to the hard disk drive. Um, by default, it's set at half frame. Again, all you're doing with these settings is each one that you leave at these, you know, leaving the quality down a little bit, choosing this at half frame, um, it just causes it to... Uh, you know the quality to suffer a bit um, if you have the computer to do it you know on this computer I could easily run full frame and 100% my you know hard drive is fast if you're using an SSD or you're using a very fast um, you know conventional hard drive then you have no issue doing 100% and full frame I would still choose the MJPEG compression however um, but for just this we'll just leave it at default for now Frame rate, this is just capturing at what frame rate you want to capture the video at. You can go up to 100 frames per second. Uh, you know, the normal is either 30 or 60, depending on what type of game you're playing. If you're playing a first person shooter, you're going to want to set that probably at 60 frames per second if your game's running at 60 frames per second and higher. If it's not, 60 frames per second is really not going to do much for you. Um, and you're probably better off sticking to 30 or even 45 or something like that. But the, the normals are either 30 or 60, depending on your computer. Frame rate limit disabled. Uh, this just allows you, um, you can define the frame rate limit of what, you know, it tells it right here, 3D applications during video capture. Um, it can improve the result in video smoothness. Um, it can limit, you know, it just limits the frame rate on the video capture. Um, you know, really probably not something you're going to you're gonna use. Um, so we'll just leave that turned off. Your videos folder, that's just where the um, you know files will go after you capture them it'll capture them in there you can view the folder or you can browse the which would allow you to change where you want them captured to whether your desktop or another special folder that you have then you have your video capture compatibility properties 
multi-threaded optimization. Uh, all this does is allow you to select how many of your cores. You can see I'm on an eight core computer, so I can use up to eight cores for this program. If I don't want to use my entire CPU or give this program access to my entire CPU's uh, processors, I can limit it to either four or six. You can just leave it on automatic and the program will take care of it and use as much as it can and try to uh, dial it back when it needs to. I leave it at automatic um, would be my recommendation. Um, if you're having problems, you can limit it, but the more you limit it, um, you know, obviously the more it's going to affect while it's trying to do anything. And if you have the frame rate set at full frame and 100% quality and stuff, you probably want to use as much as possible. Um, the rest just enable gamma correction, um, enable MJPEG decoder, crop video dimensions to make it multiples of 16. Uh, those are things that you're really not going to need. Um, you know, so, so you don't really need to mess with them. Um, this is only, the only one you might have to mess with is this one, and that is if uh, you're having problems with the video importing into Vegas or whatever other, whatever other program you're using, um, sometimes it doesn't decode it quite right. Um, you know, this will allow it to uh, decode better in programs and stuff. Um, but I don't recommend it if you don't need it because it does, again, draw on your PC's resources. Um, another nice feature of this program, since it is, uh, you know, a free program, you know, which is not something you normally see in free programs, is that it does allow you to ca capture up to two different audio sources. Um, and what that is is you might want to select your mic um, and have that set at a separate um, audio source than your actual uh, gameplay and what this allows you to do is let's say we have them audio you know I just put them both on auto select now but you would select them then you can set whether you want push to talk but the nice thing about having two separate audio sources is then you can mix uh, multiple audio tracks or if you leave this unchecked what it'll do is it'll record both of these audios into separate audio files on your computer this allows you then when you go into Sony Vegas or whatever video editing program you use um, you have two separate audio files, you know, the, the gameplay audio, the computer's audio, and you also have your microphone's audio. Um, this allows you to adjust the volume separately so that you can make sure your mic is louder than the gameplay volume if you are recording yourself talking as well or, you know, a party of people or whatever. Um, and then you can select, you know, if you want to down mix multi-channel audio to stereo, that means if it's like 5.1, um, you know, your computer system set up for 5.1 it'll down mix it to uh, stereo which is something you definitely want to do because most people don't need um, you know 5.1 channel surround sound watching YouTube videos and stuff um, so that's it guys that is MSI afterburner um, like I said it's completely free to download it does do a lot more than just video capture but the reason for this video was just uh, to show you guys a free alternative to video capture and software um, to get you know that way you don't have to buy fraps or play call and it does work really well um, so there you guys have it i hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh you know if you make any videos with it or whatever and want to share them feel free to send me a message or whatever and i'll check them out um, but uh yeah so uh there you guys have it msi afterburner free video capturing software it's about time there is some free software that's actually really good and this is the best free software I've ever seen. So I want to thank you guys for watching this video. If it helped you out or if it kind of went through the options and showed you everything and told you the best settings and stuff, then uh, give it a like. Also, maybe consider subscribing to our channel. We're a newer channel, so anybody subscribing helps us out tremendously. And we appreciate it very, very much. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the game. Later.